Okay, guys. So I decided to do a little bit of an in, in, infor, you know, informational, informative, um, show and tell type video today for you guys. Because, well, I'm bored. So we're going to talk about night vision today. This is a carry case. Um, <clears throat> right now I've got my Rhino mount here. Um, as well as my uh, helmet strap that the Rhino mount clips into. And that allows my night vision device to be mounted to an advanced combat helmet, ACH helmet. Um, if you haven't ever seen one, I can show you one in a little bit. Uh, needless to say, this has got a malice clip and a malice clip. Two malice clips basically go through molly webbing and allow me to keep my night vision, which is a PBS-7. It's a little bit old school, but I like it better um, than using a monotube um, like a PBS-14. But uh, I just am not going to pay six to eight thousand dollars to get dual, uh, real duels. Um, it's just it's stupid. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to look at this. But this is the way you carry it on your on your military gear or a web belt. All right, but it keeps it protected in this hard case. Here's where I actually keep it stored in this Pelican case. Okay, um, as you as you can imagine, night vision is expensive. <laughs> Uh, and so you take good care of it and light is not good for it. You can burn your tubes out, these analog tubes. This is a skull crusher mount. So if you want to run like a, like a ball cap, um, and, and not, not wear a military helmet, this is the way to do it. And what happens here is you've got a chin strap, um, a head halo harness that your head sits in, and then you mount your night vision right here into this little beauty and then this slides back and forth like so so you can get it adjusted to the appropriate location for your eye all right uh now here is my compartment <clears throat> my, my pouch for the night vision it's really hard to do all this one-handed like i need a tripod so bad but i'm just too cheap to go get one or order one up but needless to say uh this is the pbs7 which is um the night vision that the United States military used for a long time. We've since now gone to the PBS 14 for most applications, as well as some other duels, PBS 31s and stuff for special operations guys. But you notice I always keep my lens cap on, especially if there's light. And yes, it does have a little pinhole in it. Now look how tiny that pinhole is. Now I'll show you in a minute. This night vision device can see through that pinhole it is incredible it's absolutely incredible all right and then down here i've got an infrared illuminator that is focusable okay and then an auto gate um tool as well and auto gating protects the night vision from sudden flashes of light now this is the battery compartment as you can see it's waterproof um, and it holds two uh, AA batteries. I know that sounds sound silly, but that's literally what it runs on. Nice and simple. Two AA batteries. If you run lithiums, you get way more time. This thing will eat alkaline batteries for breakfast. So run lithiums. But anyway, uh, here's your here's your eye cups. Uh, you can adjust them, kind of get them turned straight. But anyway, it goes on your face like so, right? And then each eye looks into here, but you're actually seeing the same image transposed onto both of these, and they're collimated perfectly, so you don't get sick. That's the problem. If you run sing if you run two single tubes, one over each eye, you'll get sick as a dog. It's like uh, seasickness. So what's nice about this is you're seeing everything perfectly aligned with both your eyeballs. Now this lens only sees a 40 degree angle. All right, so when I'm out looking like this, I got a 40 degree circle and I'll cut this thing on here and show you in just a minute what it looks like. Here's your power switch. Here's your adjustable infrared beam. Okay, and it focuses that infrared light. It's like an invisible flashlight. You can't see it, but the night vision can. All right, and here's your power switch. You got it off, on. You can turn IR, you pull out and twist. And then that turns the IR on, okay? And IR is the infrared light. So here's your mount that slides into your helmet piece or your, um, for instance, here's my, here's my Rhino mount, right? And let's flip it to where it would be in the worn position. There we go. So it mounts up on the helmet like so. This is your head, like my hand is my head. And then that's the mount, see there? So if we turn our night vision this way, all right, so 
So you got PBS7, Rhino mount, and it just mates up like so. There we go. Then once it's clipped in, you can see how this would plug into the front of the helmet, and poof, you're looking around, you're running night vision, all right? So let's throw some batteries in it. I'll show you some images and some cool stuff like that uh, of, of what, it, what it can see uh, even through this little baby cap. Now we'll have to have the lights turned off, so it'll be a little bit difficult, but we'll, we'll work through it. So I'll be right Okay, there. I have batteries installed. As you can see, I've got the room pretty, pretty dark, okay? Um, and that's because we don't want to damage this. Even with the lens cap on, you can damage it if it looks into light for an extended period of time in one area. All right, so I've still got it mounted up to the Rhino mount, you can see. All right, and I put the batteries in. Now you always store this thing with batteries off, all right? I'm going to cut her on, and you'll be able to see these images. Let's see. There we go. So, let me get this camera alignment. <laughs> it's going to be kind of difficult. All right. There we go. All right. Now you're looking through that lens cap. All right. You see how you can see everything in a home? You're literally looking through a lens cap. All right, right now it's pretty crazy how that works. Let me stand up so you guys can see what you see in the night vision. All right. This is a Gen 3 tube made by L3, so it's very high quality. It looks like there's a little blemish right there on the right, but it's not. It's just the, it's just the way the camera's focusing on this thing. All right, and that's one side. Now let's look at the other side. And you'll see that you're seeing the same image. Seeing the same image both ways. Now that round circle you're seeing is exactly... All right, it is exactly 40 degrees. So that means you lose a lot of your depth perception and ability to do things like that. But look, all those images you were seeing is through that little teeny tiny hole in that cap. All right, through that tiny hole in that cap. All right, so that's, that's the night vision. All right, I've taken my two lithium batteries out so we can uh, safely check out the night vision a little bit. All right, now here's that cap you were looking through. All right, now I'm going to take it off so you can see just for a moment. I don't want to damage it. But this is how big the actual lens is, right? Crazy. All right, and you were looking through that little tea tiny pin prick right there. All right, so imagine, all right, and that was in a room. Check this out now. That was in a room that normally looks like this. That's the scenario you were in seeing through that little pinprick of a hole. So imagine if you had that entire lens uncovered, even in pitch black darkness. It's incredible what you can see. All right. And so what I've got is a couple different laser aiming devices and things like that as well. Infrared lasers, infrared lights um, attached to rifles and different things like that, as well as my helmets. Got a couple different helmet mounts like I was showing you for this Rhino thing. Um, and it's pretty cool if you do get into a situation like you're wearing your helmet all right and you get into a situation where you need to flip this thing up out of the way all right see then it would be like this on your helmet up and away from your head now you can you're just using your regular eyeballs right mark one eyeball <laughs> and um when it's time to use night vision again you you flip it back down like so okay really got to get a tripod it would make this so much easier for me but needless to say you can run it on the skull crusher mount all right, pretty simple. You can run it on the helmet mount, and you can use it to uh, walk and navigate at nighttime. You can use it to do all sorts of incredible things. Uh, you can use it to shoot, hunt, uh, military applications, and things like that. The really good thing about the PBS-7, in my opinion, is that it's easy to drive with them. So if you run a PBS-14, which is a single tube, right, it would be a tube like this, but only coming into one eyeball. You don't have two viewfinders. On a PBS-14, you just have 
one straight one instead of one tube coming into two viewfinders. And that's nice and all for just kind of running around and shooting and shoot houses and things like that. But when you need to drive a car, um, there's something about just doing it with one eyeball. It's really weird. Kind of makes you feel, feel feel sick too. With this, I don't know. I just I just do better with it. I can drive better with it, and I can get away with spending three grand on something like this um, and do ninety percent of what everyone else can do with a, a set of True Duels, True Duel um, night visions like PVS thirty ones that cost six to eight thousand dollars on a good day. So uh, on a good day, all right, depending on how high quality the tubes are you get in them. If you get into white phosphor and stuff like that too, it gets pretty crazy. You notice my night vision is green. They have, uh, L3 does make a new tube that's called white phosphorus. And it's, it looks like it's got a blue hue to it, but it's actually called white phosphor. This is green phosphor. Uh, green's the original color of night vision because green is the color that the human eye has the easiest time perceiving, picking up, and differentiating shades all right, in. But the white phosphor is neat because uh, your environment just looks brighter. But you can discern a few things differently. But green is way easier on the eyes, in my opinion, if you're looking through them for a long time. All right, if you're looking through uh, through these things for hours, green's a little bit easier on the eyes. Um, but the un unfilmed white phosphor Gen 3 from L3 Industries is, is pretty incredible. Um, but look, Mr. Ferguson ain't got that kind of kind of money, so we're going with this. This is this was uh, latest and greatest, like back when I first joined the military, um, and and it still does great. It does really really great if you have realistic expectations and uh, use use it use it in a team environment or go hunting and something stuff like that. So anyway, night vision one hundred and one. Um, uh, I'll probably, you know, maybe show my helmets and stuff in, a, in another video, but needless to say, just something to entertain you guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you've never seen through real night vision, this is no joke, military issue, L3 um, intensifier tube, analog night vision. This is not digital stuff. This is not a Sony video camera. No, this is real. Um, and it's just like what you'd see in, in Call of Duty. This is just a little bit older version of it instead of running dual tubes or quad quad tubes. You can get quad tubes that are like this and you get more than 40, 40 degrees of, of uh, peripheral vision, but then things are super heavy and they cost $22,000. But anyway, this is reasonable. All right. All right, guys, I'll catch up with you later and we'll make some more videos.